Having covered the uses and principles of deep learning, what makes deep learning work, and the preparation, development, training, and inferencing of a data set in the previous four videos, the fifth episode in this series deals with the hardware required to perform deep learning. To understand the hardware to choose for each stage of deep learning, we need to understand GPU performance. We've seen how the many processing cores in a GPU are designed to process hugely parallel workloads with the objective of delivering results in shorter timeframes. However, there are a number of factors that can define how quickly you can see results. The primary one being accuracy of the results required or precision. Precision refers to the number of decimal places in any given result. If you think about a score out of 10, two people could get 8 out of 10, there's nothing between them, but add a decimal point such as 8.2 and 8.7 out of 10, you have more precise results. Add another decimal and you have even more precision. Having more decimal places to represent each number gives scientists the flexibility to represent a larger range of values, with room for a fluctuating number of digits on either side of the decimal point during the course of a computation. This is called floating point, abbreviated to FP. Within GPU specification sheets, you'll see terms like FP32, FP64 or FP16. FP32 refers to 32 decimal places and it's termed single precision. FP64, twice as precise at 64 decimal places, is called double precision. And FP16, being half as precise, is termed half precision. The higher precision level a machine uses, the more computational resources, data transfer and memory storage it requires. It'll also cost more and consume more power. Once a model is trained and ready for inference, obtaining results from a new data set, precision is often lowered, still to eight or even four decimal places. This is referred to as int eight or int four, integer eight or integer four. Once you know a model gives accurate results, moving to a lower precision decreases power and GPU memory burden to deliver results faster. Depending on budget and performance required, NVIDIA produces various ranges of GPUs, each aimed at delivering performance at different precision levels. Now we've covered GPU performance, it's vital to understand what GPU accelerated systems look like for each of the three stages of development, training and inferencing. A scan is an accredited NVIDIA Elite Solution provider. You can be sure all our systems are tailored to meet the exacting demands of each stage. As we've previously mentioned, AI development is best done on a workstation containing one to four NVIDIA GPUs. Depending on budget and how fast you need to work, multiple GPUs will allow several models to be developed together. SCAN offers either DevBox Pro devices featuring NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPUs or NVIDIA Data Science Workstation devices based on NVIDIA Professional RTX GPUs, each created with NVLink technology to kickstart the deep learning process and access to frameworks from the NVIDIA GPU cloud is included. For the training phase, this is best carried out on more powerful server hardware containing four or more GPUs. There are a number of options here, including SCAN's own NVIDIA EGX and HGX reference architectures, or the NVIDIA DGX range of all-in-one AI appliances. These can be configured with either NVIDIA RTX GPUs or the latest A100 Ampere-based GPUs, respectively. All these models include NVLink and NVSwitch technologies to get the most from your GPUs, because as we've seen, the more powerful the training hardware is, the faster your final model will be ready for inferencing. When it comes to inferencing, SCAN offers a range of modular edge AI platforms designed to deliver embedded GPU performance in whatever environment your project demands. Whether this be an industrial, medical or smart city development, these systems are able to provide the onboard power to drive rapid inferencing, delivering a diverse array of connections and compatibility for cameras, sensors and more, and are resilient to harsh weather, temperature extremes and extended operation between maintenance intervals. So now we've covered the hardware used in deep learning, why not watch the last video in this series that explores the surrounding infrastructure, the SCAN AI ecosystem.